Hi, I'm Chad with Next Vision. Um, we're going to be going over the initial setup, um, operator training for an OptiView iView, um, the OptiView iCam, as well as the combo, which is both of them, the iView and the iCam, known as the iFusion. Um, so basically, we're going to go over everything here. Um, Patrick will start to, to pan uh, the the basically this is what it would look like when you get um, one of those instruments from us this is how it will look when you unpack the box um, after it has arrived at your facility all the parts and pieces we have laid out on the table um, we can't ship it together so once you unpack the boxes this is how it will be in addition to this table um, some power table and these are the tools that you'll need. There is a Phillips screwdriver and three metric Allen wrenches. This is a three millimeter, a two and a half millimeter, and a two millimeter Allen wrench here. All right, so we're gonna start with installing the uh, bracket and the all-in-one PC. So you're going to need to locate the bracket with the nut and this bolt underneath it. Also your all-in-one PC with these four three millimeter screws and your three millimeter driver. So first we're gonna start by taking this bracket and bring it over to the table. And it's always gonna mount in this back right side. So you're going to take this, drop it down in that hole. And then through here, you have access to that and you'll come underneath, you'll place that plate under and then take that nut and just drive it up there. It's the operator's right hand side. You know it's the operator's side of the table because it has the up down controls for the table and it's the right side because the operator of the camera will be on this side of the table. All right now we have that fastened down so it's connected to the table and the next thing we're going to grab is the all-in-one and then the four screws. So we need our three mil four screws, and then the all-in-one. So you're gonna line up the bracket here with these four points in the back. So you'll just kind of take it, line it up. All right, and then once you have all four of those tightened, your all-in-one monitor or PC is now connected and ready to go. And we'll move on to the next step. All right, so this is step two in the install process. We're going to be installing the base plate and the headrest. Uh, so before we bring it over to the table, there's a few things that we need to do first. Um, for this part, you're going to need your Phillips head, your two and a half millimeter and your two millimeter as well as finding these four screws. So to start, we need to come over to the base plate and on this back side here, we need to take our two millimeter and back out this screw and then take our two and a half and back out this one a little bit so that we can get this piece out. All right, so under here, there's a little foam piece that you need to take out. So we'll pop that out and then we'll grab our headrest, run the wire in this channel here. And then we'll bring it over and run our wire down that hole and pull it through. And then once you have that in place, you need to take your two mil and tighten this down. And then also take your two and a half and tighten both of these down. Once you do that, you're gonna turn your headrest to the side. And now under here, you have to connect this cable right here. So to do that, we're going to take our two and a half Okay. 
All right, now that you have that connected, you're going to replace your foam in there. And then we're going to bring this over to the table. So this will connect on the left side. You see you have four spots in here to where those screws are gonna go to secure the base plate to the table. So we're just going to set the plate down on the table and line it up with the holes. And now we'll just take our Phillips head and screw these down into the table. And then that completes step two. All right, so you're going to need your two and a half and your two millimeter. And we're going to start with the rails and these four screws and bring it over to the base plate. So you're just going to line up the holes, drop these in here. And you'll notice that on the outside, there's this little bracket here. So that goes in that little channel there. And then we're just going to secure those down with those four screws. We're then going to grab the base, place it down on the rails. You're going to want to line it up so that it's on, they're on the same teeth and it's not crooked. And once you got it lined up, you're going to grab your two covers with those four screws. And the easiest way to tell if it's straight is you pull it all the way back and make sure you have the same distance. And then you're going to come and place the brackets here. There's two screws that go into the side to secure those, so you're just going to place that there. And then take your two mil and screw those in. Make sure that it's moving and you're complete with step three. Before we get into step four, our team has labeled all of the connectors with a number. All of the cords have numbers and are labeled to make it hopefully as clear as possible when connecting you plug them in to the corresponding numbers all right so now we're on to step four we're going to mount both our iCam and our iView um, before I bring it over to the table, I just want to point out that this fiber optic cable is connected to the eye view along with this cable. It does not disconnect from the control box. And this is a very sensitive cable, um, so you just have to be careful when you're moving it. So we're going to grab this, grab this, place this down on the table. And then the control box slots down into here. So you'll place that down here. You're going to run your cable behind here and then place your eye view is always on the left. So it's down like that. And then we'll grab our eye cam. And 
then this will go on the right one. And then our cables, we'll pop this off and we'll run all our cables down in this channel here, pop this back on. All right, so now we're moving on to step five to where we're going to be running our two power cables. This one over here is for your all-in-one PC, and then this one is for your iCam. So if you just had the iView, you will not have this power cable here. If you have a Gen 2, you'll still have this one, and if you have a Gen 1, it's a little bit of a different setup, but we'll have it all labeled for you to set up. So we're gonna bring this over here. This cable is going to run down in this channel here and come up through this hole. And then we'll pull that through and we'll place that there. And then we will connect this end right here. And if we come over to the back, We're going to take the power cable, and if we check the label, it's number eight. We're gonna look for eight, which is right there. And we'll snap that in. So now your all-in-one has power, and we will then grab our second power cable, which is for your iCam. Same thing, we're gonna run the cable, but this one goes off into the left here. So we'll run that over. Place that there, plug this side down here, and then over on this side, same thing, you're going to look, label number six, number six, and you'll connect those two. So now both your all-in-one and your iCam have power and we're going to move on to our next step, which is running all the cables to the all-in-one and the control box. And then now we're on step six to where we're going to run the last few cables to the control box and the all-in-one PC. So this cable is separate, so you're going to need to grab it. And we're going to come over to the control box on this first end. So same thing, you're gonna look for the number, so number one. And then you're going to look for it on the control box, number one. And then the next one, number two, number two. Plug that in. These two cables then will connect to your PC. So just like we did with the power cable, we're going to run them through here. And then we're going to come around back to the computer. So then you have LAN 2, you'll connect that on the PC, you have 5, connect that there. We then have all the cables that are coming off of the iCam and the iView, so we have two more USB cables here, so we have 6. We have seven. Now the, these labels might be different um, numbers for the one that you have, but it's the same concept. Just find the number that's on the cable and match it up with the one that's on the back of the box. And then this cable we're gonna have to run through to go to the control box. So we'll come through the side here. So cable number three, and then number three. You're gonna to wanna to tighten these down. And once you get those tightened down, we're gonna come up top, and you're gonna have these two cables here that will connect both into your iView and the iCam. So on this one, you're gonna take the shorter end and you're gonna plug it into right there on the side. And then this longer one is going to come around to this side. Plug in right there. 
And then your last cables you're going to need are two power cables. So this is for then the table and the control box. So you're gonna plug in one cable here. And one cable there. All right, so now that we have those cables connected down here, we're going to then connect these to power. It is recommended that you use a hospital grade transformer to connect these two, but for demonstration purposes, we're just gonna plug it in. And then once you do that, the install is complete. The last step would be to kind of clean up the wires, like use some zip ties to secure all these. But other than that, you're ready to go. As you're zip tying your wires and you get that all secured, you could just, after that's done, put this plate down here. So that's just an extra protection just for the cables so that you don't bump into them or disconnect any of them. And then the last piece is to power it on. So down here on the control box, we're going to flip this switch and then up on the all-in-one, we're going to hold the power button and then they'll boot up and we'll take a look at how to operate this. One thing to note is this will be an empty port. There's nothing that plugs into this, so don't be alarmed you haven't missed anything. That one doesn't have a corresponding cord. And after you booted the all-in-one computer, we're going to go to the iView software. If you notice, there's one for iView as well as iCam. We're going to start with iView. All right, once you're in the iView software, this icon is to add a new patient. This is to edit a patient. This is to acquire a scan, and this is to analyze or review the scans that you've already taken. We're gonna add a patient. You enter the first name, last name, gender, and I'm just gonna go with a generic birthday. So two for the month, two for the day, four for the year. You can add these others if you need to. Um, we're not gonna add them here, just hit save. This is the patient we just entered. Now we're gonna go to either, you can either click this button or you can use your side um, windows here. I'm gonna click the scan icon. This automatically defaults to OU. If you need to just do the right eye, Click this one or the left eye here. If you just need to do one of these scans, you can select it and see how it's highlighted. Um, if you click nerve fiber layer, it's going to highlight all of them. Um, if you click retina, it's going to highlight all of them. Same thing with the cornea. We'll get into the cornea later. For now, we're going to select nerve fiber layer. Um, on, it's going to highlight all of these and then click this play button here to capture. And now we want to make sure if it's an eye fusion that the eye view OCT is lined up. This is the eye cam. We're not in that software yet. We'll get to that in a minute too. All right, I'm going to have the our test patient come forward. Now you can see his eye or the pupil here. The nerve fiber will start to come into view here. Now he's going to look at the straight ahead fixation, which I believe is an X. Um, you can see we have really good signal strength here. 
there's two red lines that are very faint. You want as much of the retina between those scans or those two lines as you can and then click the button that's on top of the joystick. Now when you click all of them um, on the nerve fiber layer, it will automatically go to the next scan. If you hit next scan there, it will go ahead and do all three for the nerve fiber report. Now on this one, same thing with the two lines. You want to get as much in between the two red lines as you can. But if you look down here, the green circle is here. His nerve is more to the right. So I'm going to take my mouse and click the center of his nerve. It's going to center up and then I'm going to back out to get the anatomy back down. I'm going to click the button again to acquire. And it's going to move on to the nerve fiber 3D disc. Same thing as before. We want to make sure the nerve is centered in our green and the anatomy as much as we can get between those red lines. Click the joystick again, the button on the joystick. Now the first time you scan a patient since we just entered this patient in here, you'll get this screen after the third scan. If you get a good scan and it looks like the um, it outlined the nerve um, pretty good, you can click use as baseline and this is that's going to be his baseline scan for every time that he returns that's that'll be the baseline now we're going to go to the left eye I told you right here you're on the incorrect eye left eye so I'm going to slide my camera over and repeat that process fixation moved. Now you can see there if it starts to invert the live B scan there, you're too close. Pull it back. Want as much of the anatomy between those lines as we can. Same thing with the green circle. We're a little off center. I'm going to click right in the center of his nerve. It'll center it for you. Then click your button on the joystick to acquire. Last one and the same thing. It's creating that baseline again for the left eye. That's a pretty good scan. We're going to hit uses baseline. If you don't get a good scan, you click the rescan button. And that is all of the scans for the nerve fiber layer. Now we're going to go to the retina scans. Perfect. Once I have it between the red lines, I'm clicking the button on the joystick. I'm going to go to next scan. If you don't get a good scan, you can click rescan again. This is the retina map. Same thing. A three D retina scan.
You can also hit auto adjust if you need to. Um, if it's if the image seems out of focus, they've been pretty good on these scans. So now we'll go to the left eye. I'm going to click auto adjust just so it'll go through its paces here. Perfect. Now this is an eye fusion as we mentioned earlier. Um, this, if you have just the OptiView, the, these are exactly the same scans and same um, ways to acquire and focus that are on just the eye view. And in a minute, once we finish the retina scans, we'll do the eye cam. Perfect. And now we're going to do the cornea. This is also through the eye view. The cornea gives you two scans that you can do. It's pachymetry and an angle scan. Should be a box like this. That'll have a lens in it like this. There's eye view cam. You take this lens and you can see the red light engage. That's how you know you have your lens in the correct placement and you're ready for the anterior scans. I'm going to select cornea so we do both of them. It's going to tell you, make sure you that you uh, Put the cam lens attachment on it. His eyes start to come in there. Now that, we want to center his pupil here in the middle green circle. You can see his cornea start to come into view and then you see the light reflex start to kind of flicker. Now that is, has a sweet spot that you want to find by moving, once you get right distance wise, move it left to right and the stronger that light signal that comes in, the better your pachymetry is going to be. So. Like right there is perfect. I want as much of that light reflex coming in there as I can get. Okay, so we're gonna, we got a good one there. We're gonna go to the next scan, which is the angle scan. So we're on his right eye. The, you can see the green arrow. I wanna always start here and split his pupil with that green arrow, 50-50 horizontally. And then I'm gonna go to move the camera to the left while the patient still looks straight ahead. And I want the center of this green line right on his medial limbus right there and then I'm going to go in and you can see the cornea and the iris start to come into view. Now I want to center it up as much as I can, get as much of the anatomy in the scan as I can and click OK. Perfect. Now we're going to go to the next scan which is his left eye. And it's wanting us to hit auto adjust from the beginning. All right, same thing. Center the pupil in the center green circle there. That's a really strong light reflex. Perfect. We're going to hit next scan. Same thing. I have split his pupil in half with the green line on the left BC, or live screen. I'm going to his medial canthus. And I can see his cornea and iris start to come into view. When I get that, that's pretty good. I'm going to click the capture button. 
and we should be finished acquiring. Now, I want to point out one thing. The eye scan is meant to be mobile, so you can grab it here. And if you can't, if you're all the way over, it's all the way over, and you still can't get as far over one way or the other as you need to, grab it on the handle and just turn it slightly one way or the other. It can pivot. One more feature of the eye view is the eye wellness scans here. I'm gonna click that, the capture button. Okay. This is the left eye. Okay, so after doing the OCT, we're gonna switch to the eye cam. The eye fusion has a button here for release, and then you can click the eye cam into place. On the software, you already have a patient pulled up. The one we entered here, I'm gonna go over into the tabs here and click the eye cam. I'm gonna go over to my patients, show all, select the one that we just had, and at the bottom I'm gonna to go to capture. Perfect. I'm gonna select the right eye here. You can toggle to increase your illumination inside, the flash level, and the focus illumination here. There's also the buttons on the camera. I'm gonna hit the light. So the patient will be, when you bring it close to their eye, you can kind of see on the screen what they're seeing. So there are these four circles on the outside. There's a big center circle and there's a triangle over here we want them to just kind of look in the dead center. There's a, another circle on the opposite side. So we want to look kind of dead center of the big circle. And by moving it in and out, we get these two light reflexes as clear as you can. And click the acquire button. That's a good one. We're going to click save there. Now also on the right eye, I'm going to have them look off to the side, which is a square with a circle in it for the nerve. That's the fixation for optic nerve photos. Click save there. I'm going to go to the left eye. Same thing, dead center of the big circle in the middle for the retina photo. We're going to click save. And then the little circle or square for the nerve photo. On the eye cam, this is the focusing knob for your fundus photos, the flash intensity, the illumination while you're looking, like before you snap the photo, this is the illumination. And then it has some plus, plano, minus to help focus for high myopes or hyperopes. Okay, now after capturing, we just did every scan offered by the eye fusion we want to go over here to review and here it tells you the date you can collapse this and once they've returned and been seen over a period of time you can select previous ones we entered a new patient so this is the first recorded visit and these are all the scans that we took. Now normally it's not going to be all of these. 
probably a very rare case where you do all of them. Um, but this is going to, we'll go through them. Let's start with the wellness scan. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is click OU report. Now this gives you your, your full thickness map as well as your GCC. Thickness reports right here. And this is OU right eye left eye and you could print from here okay now there are three tabs here we just covered the eye wellness overview O and H GCC overview retina overview um, basically it will take and put into a report all of the scans that we have taken for each category. So the ONH GCC it will process and this is the OU report. You have the right eye up top and the left eye on the bottom with the parameters here. GCC, RNFL, tells you the exam date. And then we'll come and click the retina overview same thing here for the reports it gives you the thickness maps the B scan image and you would print or export from this screen as well okay now after we have viewed the ONH GCC retina and eye wellness reports we there's not a tab for um, the anterior segment portion which was the cornea so we're going to scroll to the bottom. That was some of the last ones we did. So over here is the cornea pachymetry, angle for the right eye, cornea pachymetry, and angle for the left eye. So we'll click cornea pachymetry. That's going to show you the image as well as give you a full thickness map over here, that little star being the thinnest point. Um, and it tells you as long as you get that star, it'll tell you the minimum thickness um, of where it's at. The minimum thickness in that blue star is 567. We'll click OU report. Um, if you're evaluating keratoconus, this will probably be a, a helpful report. Um, we got good scans on both eyes. It shows you the full thickness on both eyes as well as the minimum thickness. Again, notated by those scar uh, stars, the blue stars. Um, again, here you would either export, you could print. Um, I'm going to click this red X and go back so we can view the angle scans that we took. This is the angle OCT. And this shows you where the measurement was taken. We will go over here to select the little caliper tools here. What we want to do is find a distance. So I'm going to click right here on the iris and I'm going to drag this up to the bottom of the cornea. And that tells me it is 695 microns from the iris, which means his angle is wide open. And I can print or export from this screen here. We'll click OU report, show you both eyes. You can only do the caliper tool on an individual eye. Um, so if you, if you do want to print that measurement or, or measure it um, to notate it in the chart, you'd have to, to select one scan or the other, um, not this OU report. Okay, so now to review the fundus images that we took, we're going to click, we clicked iCam over here. You can actually toggle between, so now this tab says iView. When you're in the iView software, it changes to iCam. You can actually toggle between the iCam and iView pretty, pretty quickly and easily. 
Um, we have our patient selected. It says we took four images. We'll click review. This was the left eye nerve. This is the double click for the left eye Mac. Right eye nerve. If you need to enhance or rotate, um, there's a magnifying glass for zoom. You can do it that way um, over there under the tools tab. And then the straight ahead retina shot for the right eye. Um, here you would print and export from this screen here. Now at the end of the day, when you're finished, you want to X out of the software, X out of the iCam software, which brings you to your home screen. You scroll down to the bottom. We're going to shut it down just like a computer. The iCam will have a little cap. You want to put that on at the end of the day and cover the unit with a dust cover. Also at the end of the day, you'll want to flip this little switch off. Turns the power to the main unit off. Just when you come in in the morning, don't forget to flip that on first.